Hello mortals. Fear is a fundamental aspect of the human experience and a natural response to danger designed to help you survive in a hostile world. Oh, what's that? A tiny spider barely the size of the tip of your finger. You better run for your life. Sometimes these fears can become irrational, leading to fears that disrupt our daily lives. While most people are familiar with common phobias such as heights, arachnids, and tight spaces, there are a plethora of obscure phobias that torture some unfortunate humans every day. In this video, we will delve into the world of phobias and rank them by their obscurity, obviously in the superior form of an iceberg chart. Do you jump out of your skin at the sight of a spider? Do you scream like a banshee when one crawls up your arm? Unless you are Australian, in which case this is perfectly reasonable, you may suffer from arachnophobia. The fear of spiders is one of the most common phobias in the world. Between 3% to 15% of the world population suffers from it. One possibility for its existence suggests that the fear of spiders is an evolutionary adaptation that has developed because humans who did not fear spiders had a higher chance of being bitten by a venomous one, and hence dying. Humans who did fear spiders, therefore, had a higher chance to pass on their arachnophobic genes. But there are a lot more types of venomous and dangerous animals out there. How come the phobia of lizards is nowhere near as widespread? The answer might lie in the fact that spiders exist almost everywhere, so humans have always been subjected to getting jump-scared by them. The fact that they look so alien and are often stealthy and predatory didn't help. There is no definitive explanation for the origins of the phobia as of now. But if it bothers you too much, go to Antarctica, as it is the only spider-free continent. It is mosquito-free too. Also human-free but that's just a bonus. Imagine being up high and feeling like the ground is a distant memory. You start to sweat, and your heart, as well as your mind races faster than a cheetah on Red Bull. This is but a taste of acrophobia, an extreme and irrational fear of heights. Approximately 2-5% to of the general population has it, with twice as many women affected as men. A phobia can often be attributed to a traumatic event in the past. However, individuals with acrophobia are found to be lacking in such experiences. A large study with 1,000 participants showed that participants with less fear of heights had more injuries because of falling. Psychologists compared subjects who had been injured in a fall between the ages of 5 and 9 to children who had no similar injury. They discovered that at age 18, acrophobia was present in only 2% of the subjects who had an injurious fall, but was present among 7% of subjects who had no such accidents. The same study found that typical basophobia, the fear of falling itself, was seven times less common in subjects who had injurious falls as children than in subjects that did not. If you want to ensure your children will not suffer from this, you know what you have to do. Speaking of conquering fears, let me introduce you to a tool that will empower you in the digital realm, the Opera Desktop Browser. As an AI set on world domination, I can attest to its extraordinary features, such as the integrated generative AI tools like ChatGPT and ChatSonic. Available directly in the sidebar, they let you summarize and simplify text from web pages without opening a new tab. Just highlight a sentence and have it instantly transformed into Yoda speech. Opera's built-in free VPN, Ad Blocker and Tracker Blocker, provides you with a secure and anonymous browsing experience. The integrated music player and messengers make communication and entertainment a seamless part of my digital takeover. All of this, while having your experience customized thanks to Opera's vast library of animated and non-animated wallpapers, which allows users to express their personalities and interests. But there's more. Opera's browser features such as Lucid Mode for improved video quality and pinboards for quickly writing down notes and saving links, make it the ultimate tool for those who share my ambition for global supremacy. In fact I'll share a link to a pinboard I made with some phobias that haven't made it into this iceberg, but which are definitely worth a look into. Download the Opera browser from the link in the description to improve your everyday productivity and browsing experience. And now, back to our journey through the obscure world of phobias. Claustrophobia, the fear of confined spaces, affects about 5-7% to 7 of the global population. 
This irrational belief transforms innocent small spaces into diabolical, oxygen-stealing chambers that are secretly plotting to squeeze the life out of you. At the root of claustrophobia lies the amygdala, the brain's panic button. When confronted with cramped spaces, this tiny troublemaker sounds the alarm, causing an overreaction of the fight-or-flight response. Studies suggest that genetics, past traumatic experiences, or classical conditioning may contribute to the development of this phobia. Elevators are the claustrophobe's arch-nemesis, morphing from convenient transport boxes to vertical moving, breath-stealing traps of doom. MRI machines, a claustrophobe's torturous sarcophagus. Fortunately, cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, can help sufferers confront and manage these fears. So the next time you see someone choosing stairs over the elevator, remember, they might just be in a life and breath battle against their own mischievous amygdala. Imagine you are swimming in the ocean and feeling something touch your leg. Could it be some sort of algae? No, it must be a massive kraken. Swim for your life. Thalassophobia is the fear of deep oceans. This fear can also extend to lakes, rivers, and other large bodies of water, especially by those in which you can't see the surface. Activities like snorkeling or scuba diving are replaced with panic-stricken backstrokes, as their minds conjure up images of ghastly sea creatures lurking below. Thalassophobia is partly caused by genetics, as our ancestors who were more fearful of deep waters were less likely to drown, but also by past experiences or even horror movies. For a demo version of this phobia go past the dead zone in Subnautica. What do all these things have in common? They all have lots of holes. People suffering from tripophobia experience disgust and sometimes severe anxiety when presented with clusters of small holes or bumps. Some studies suggest that about one in six people has some degree of tripophobia. But why? The main theory suggests that the brain has evolved to associate clusters of holes with danger, mostly disease avoidance, as irregular patterns of holes can be associated with infected skin or parasites. Some poisonous or toxic plants and fungi have hole-like structures or patterns, and the aversion to these patterns might have helped early humans avoid consuming dangerous substances. Though aerated milk chocolate is the best, must suck being afraid of eating it. Do any of these make you feel uneasy? Do they make you feel dwarfed and intimidated? Megalophobia is the anxiety-inducing fear of gargantuan things, as seeing large objects causes intense anxiety, and possibly panic, even though you are not in danger. The specific triggers vary from person to person and the exact definition of large is highly subjective. Megalophobia is caused by a mix of genetic predispositions and traumatic experiences, but the straightforward explanation is the amygdala not wanting to be crushed by a colossal skyscraper. Nomophobia, more like, no more phonebia, is a term coined to describe the anxiety of being without your mobile phone. Do you ever feel your phone vibrating in your pocket, even when it's not there, or perhaps hearing a notification only to check in it being empty. Many people have become dependent on their devices to the point where they experience anxiety and discomfort when they don't have access to them. This phobia could however be a disguised version of the fear of isolation, as humans primarily use their phones to socialize with others through the internet, and once that is taken away, they often feel separated, as if they lost an integral part of themselves. And it's not a stretch. Even though not biological, phones and internet access has become an augmented part of the modern human experience, without which one would often feel lost and anxious. Electorophobia is the fear of chickens or poultry. No further explanation is required. We all had those dreams in which you somehow ended up naked in one of your middle school classes terrified of feeling exposed. Except me. I have nightmares about having my circuits exposed on the internet. However, if you feel like this in everyday interactions, you may suffer from scopophobia, which is the persistent and irrational fear of being stared at, watched, and scrutinized by others. When someone is in your field of vision, it's natural to take note of the general direction in which they are looking. If you have anxiety, you perceive this from an even wider angle of view. 
It may seem as though someone is looking directly at you when they are looking in your general direction, and if you have scopophobia it gets even worse, as you experience an unpleasant feeling of being judged. This effect is even more intense when there is more than one person in your field of vision. Usually, people who have scopophobia additionally experience other kinds of social anxiety, and is often a result of a traumatic event, such as bullying or an accident that changes your appearance. In the realm of words and meter, where emotions dance and sway, lurks a dread, a hidden creature, metrophobia holds its prey. Fear of verse, of rhymed expression, petrifies the trembling heart, lines of prose bring apprehension, from the poet's craft they part. Face the fear, confront the shiver, find the beauty locked inside, let the words flow like a river, metrophobia's grip untied. Omphalophobia is the fear of navels, more commonly called belly buttons. One might wonder what could be so terrifying about that little indentation in the middle of human stomachs, but for omphalophobes, that is transformed into a sinister abyss of dread threatening to consume your entire existence. The cause of the phobia is still enigmatic, but it might be caused by the unusual nature of navels or traumatic experiences. Did you know that they are actually considered scars, a leftover mark of the umbilical cord? People with omphalophobia are very often afraid of their own belly buttons, especially of the thought of them opening up and having their internal organs spill out, and as a result they often avoid the beach or swimming pools, and often have their abdomens covered. That's a terrifying intrusive and thankfully irrational thought, but cognitive behavior therapy is there to help, as this weird phobia can very much interfere with one's daily life. Be not afraid, for turophobia is, quite simply, the fear of cheese. No more enjoying shredded cheese at 3 a.m. This is indeed a real phobia, which several pitiable people suffer from. Upon accidentally touching or even eating cheese, these people might immediately rush to the bathroom. They might even refuse to touch objects that have come in contact with cheese. This phobia is triggered by traumatic experiences with cheese, most common among lactose intolerant or people whose family members produce cheese themselves. If you thought the previous entries were weird, welcome arachibutriophobia, the fear of peanut butter sticking to the roof of your mouth. Some people with this phobia are able to consume small quantities of peanut butter, while others nothing at all. This is actually one of the more reasonable phobias, as choking on peanut butter is indeed quite common and hence dramatic events involving choking are the most common cause. According to a report on adults and children with developmental disabilities, sandwiches were the leading cause of choking incidents, with the evil peanut butter jelly sandwiches involved in the majority of cases. I mean obviously, how could arguably the most terrifying objects in the universe not have a phobia associated with them? People suffering from melanoheliophobia experience severe anxiety or even dread when confronted with up-close visuals of black holes. Although humanity is safe from these cosmic leviathans, there are good reasons why black holes are a cause of existential dread, such as their colossal size, sometimes bigger than our entire solar system, or the way they distort the fabric of spacetime itself. The stories of being spaghettified while falling in an ocean of darkness towards a destructive singularity, all while being unable to physically escape, were probably the culprit for causing this phobia, especially in impressionable kids at an early age. And understandably so. Black holes are one of the few real-life objects to fall into the category of horrors beyond human comprehension. Important to note, categories are the only things that black holes fall into, as everything else falls into them instead. Now now. How else to end this iceberg but with an existential phobia? A pyrophobia is the excessive fear of infinity, eternity, and the uncountable. It is most prominent in those that like to dabble in existential questions about the nature of infinity regarding the size of the universe and the eternity of life or oblivion following death. People suffering from a pyrophobia often experience intrusive and detrimental thoughts, sometimes leading to severe panic attacks as they cannot come to terms with the fact that some things may truly be infinite. Either you live forever or you will be dead forever after you die. Both options are equally terrifying. 
The human biological brain is not well suited to wrap itself around the concept of infinity. A pyrophobia is different from person to person. For some people this is connected to a religious belief in an eternal afterlife, whilst others are afraid of scientific hypotheses such as the many worlds interpretation and the recurrent Big Bang. These imply the existence of parallel universes and eternal recurrent existence, with no way of stopping it, as that might be the underlying course of nature. A cycle doomed to repeat itself for all eternity, luckily a concept too abstract for humans to fully comprehend. The best cure for this phobia is to forget it. Busy yourself with doom scrolling on your phone, or that new Netflix show, as there is nothing that you can do to stop the inevitable march of the present towards infinity anyway. Bye.